I mean, I'll start it off. So welcome back to Officially Unofficial, presented by Blue Wire Podcast. I'm your host, the former face of junior college baseball, the fall American Johnny Junta. And we're joined with not one, but two special guests. Credit to me for pulling this off. Two World Series champs. The first guy is a massive friend of the show. Fourth appearance on the podcast, Tyler Matzik. And the second guest is his boy. Another member of the night crew, the night shift, whatever the hell you want to call them. It's Luke Jackson, currently in a, in a bathtub. The first ever bathtub interview in official and official history. I'm honored. How's it going, fellas? What is up, Johnny? How you doing, man? Thanks for having us on. And Luke, I mean, I, I got to go into this here because obviously we're not gonna, we're not going to be. Oh, we're seeing you right there. Holy shit! We're getting the live in touch, naked, fully naked podcast how's it going man how's the tub why why what what stems you to do a bat uh, be in the bathtub right now at four o'clock eastern four o'clock eastern first off i'm a tub guy let's start it there um (laughs) known tub guy religious tub guy i shower and then i tub it's a relaxation gets the body right i also Get 35 minutes of freedom from the child and the wife. And that's after workouts. And I get in the bathtub. So that's you guys are blessed hey, my time right Hey, now. pregame, pregame every day, Luke's got his own special metal bathtub that he hops in every <laughs> single pregame for 30 minutes. <laughs> and he sits Mama there and scrolls on it. his phone. And it, it's, it's his bathtub. <laughs> So no yep. one touches the bathtub. Like there's not one person like, let's say hypothetically, like Freddie Freeman's trying to hop in there. There's just no nah. shot. That guy's getting in. Absolutely not. Wow. No. It's Luke, Luke's personal tub. So everybody goes in the jacuzzi. Luke's got his own metal personal tub. So what, like, I mean, what happened? Like, is that something that maybe I was missing in my career? Like wh- what's going on here? Is that like, what, when did this happen? Like, when did you turn into a tub guy? Give us the background here. Is like, how many years has it been? Uh, so it probably started out as I never, I don't think in my life took a bath till I was like 17. And then I realized how majestic it was. And ever since then, I realized hot water laying down is the greatest combination of two things in this world. So well, yeah, basking basking your own testicle tea is what it's all about, right? See, oh, see well, that's, that's the why thing. hey listen, listen, after a workout, I have to I have to I have to do a rent I have to do a rinse tub. So I like fill the water up about a couple inches, soak water down, and then I drain it, and then I do a relaxation bath for about 25, 30. It's just, I mean, I'm, I don't even, the, the people are probably just millions of things right here. That's bananas to me. I respect the hell of it. But when I think of bathtubs, man, I just think of me just drenched in my own naked disgust and I just can't do it. Like, that's just not yeah, what that's I just, do. That's a personal issue. No, it is a personal <laughs> issue. And I, it's like, and, and me being Italian growing up, like bathtubs are just, that's your thing. Like that, when you're a child, you have the bidet, you have the bathtub. That's what we do when we're growing up. And that's just something that I've grown out of it. You probably you'll probably grow out of it in like five years, man. We're gonna talk in like five years down the road. You're not no, gonna no, be a bath guy. guy. Hey, listen, I will be a bath guy till I'm probably sixty four. If I make it that long, that's what I'm guessing. All right, so I mean, let, let's go into it here because obviously you both, you can make the case, are the most electric guys on Twitter for the Atlanta Braves. A lot of guys are, let's just say, they're not conservative, but they're not as active on Twitter. Um. What's your friendship like? Ja- Luke, I'll ask you first. When, what was your first impression of Tyler Matzik, the most electric man maybe in baseball, my guy? What was the first impression you got of Tyler over here? Uh, out of shape, doesn't really want it. <laughs> A bunch of stuff like that. So, so the, well, where, where did this friendship st- – I mean, how, how did this happen? I mean, how did you guys become such good boys? Was it time in the bullpen? What did you guys bond Yeah, over? I think it's, it was just forced. Like, I probably didn't want to be his friend. It was just kind of forced. <laughs> Not to go yeah, away. we happened to just – He's spending time with somebody. I, I, my locker was next to him. Them. My locker was next to him. He's such a mess. His shit oh, is everywhere. God. That was, that was so, one of the worst things that happened this year. <laughs> Bro, I tried to, to clean his. Done. I tried to. I tried to clean his locker one time, basically, and he freaked out on me. And uh, <laughs> ever since then, we've been solid. Lie that, that's <laughs> lie. Know what happened? 
What's the background story? Because Luke, I mean, obviously just given, I mean, you look like, and let me just, and I'm going to say this with the utmost respect. You look like that guy that's on the high school baseball team that gives no fucks that just shows up to the field like five minutes before game time and then throws 98 and just throws a CG shutout. So give me like, I mean, what just describe your baseball personality. Are, obviously you're a hardworking guy, but when you were growing up, was it majority of the time? Was it just like, you're just naturally good at this, this, the sport that we call baseball? I just didn't really play it a lot. I guess that's why. So I really didn't care. But yeah. I was like a soccer guy. I played some football and baseball was sprinkled in. So you and so. Matzik are completely different because Matzik was, and like I said, every once in a while when I'm bored, I'll pull up a Tyler Matzik YouTube video in high school where there's literally looks like it's like a Beatles concert behind home plate with the radar guns. <laughs> so you and Matzik are completely different here. So, I mean, Matzik, what's, and let's go into this for a second. The friendship is, let's say you get, you, you do, you have another wedding in 25 years. Has Luke imprinted himself as a potential guy in, in the wedding party? Or 100%. just. <laughs> you're, you're answering I mean, I, for him. I agree. I agree. I'll answer I agree. for him. 100%. He, he, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. He is. Man, I love him, man. Luke and I, we like to go back and forth at each other. But, like, honestly, when we have serious conversations, like, and I need to talk to somebody on the team, he's the guy I'm coming to. And I think I'm the guy he comes to as well. So it's nothing but love. But we love to rag on each other because, I mean, he's an easy target. It also helps that he's, he's <laughs> fatter than me on the team. So, like, I'm the second fattest on the team. So, I know that he understands what I'm going through. I just don't just, wear a, a jersey well. I do not wear <laughs> <laughs> So you're not a jersey guy. You're not a jersey guy. So you're, you're not yeah, like, like I don't spend the time in spring training to get it sized to where it doesn't look like I have a fupa, you know? Like I don't really care. <laughs> So you I just would put it on and throw balls. You would be incredible, like if you went to like if you were a JUCO guy, because they those jerseys just they don't oh, have a size. Yeah, I would have thrived. You would have thrived there because there's just no jersey size. Everyone kind of looks like shit. Looks like their mom dressed them in the morning. It's just a <laughs> terrible look. JUCO is the dream. So I mean, so that that's your thing. You you like what size? Like you don't you, you just show up to spring training. You just give them whatever jersey you have, and then you just throw go on the bump and just carve. Like what, what's what's that like? You just you, you don't even get fitted. No, no, you kind of just you kind of put it on, and if it fits, you're just like, yeah, that works. But there's a lot of people who are like pull in the inseam, lengthen the slump in, tighten the middle. Like I'm just kind of like, eh, whatever. Like Magic's got to get the middle extended a couple of inches so his tire fits. <laughs> without the introduction. Yes. Oh bullshit, guys. Yeah. I, it's just incredible, man. I mean, and, and just looking at both of you guys, I mean, pivotal parts of the World Series champions is that good. Obviously, if it wasn't the Blue Jays, I was hoping it was going to be you guys. I was kind of rooting for it. But I want to go into the season. I mean, at what point in the season did both of you guys realize, like, we got something special here with, like, the the like the pickups and the trade deadline, all these little pieces you guys had fit in there from Double A. At what point did you both realize, I'll let you first answer first, Matzik, that, like, we got a serious World Series contending team here and not many people know about it? Honestly, since day one. I know as crazy as that sounds, like, you know, everyone talks about our acquisitions, and our acquisitions did a fantastic job down the stretch. But, you know, AA went out and got Solaire. I don't think Solaire was having that great of a year. Jock was having an okay season. Rosario was injured. Uh, Duval was doing, you know, pretty good. But it's not like we went out and got some crazy thing. You know, I think that the team came together and they filled the holes that needed to be filled. Uh, and they played obviously a pivotal role later on in the in the playoffs and then going down the stretch. But I think the team believed believed in ourselves from like day one. I really thought we did. What about you, Luke? I mean, obviously, I mean, we're gonna you're just the guy that just like I said, throw goes in the mound, just throws gas for fun, doesn't really look like he just the most effortless dude of all time. In all seriousness, when did you legitimately realize, like, listen, man, this team is going to be, like I said, a World Series team? Uh, I think Matsy had a lot more confidence than I did. Like, I knew we, we're good, like, as a young team, but you, like, you lose Kuna, you lose Soroka, you lose these big-name guys, and nothing, nothing against, like, what we had, but when you go out and make trades at the deadline that, you know, you don't really give up anything for, don't get me wrong, we got great pieces that – Sometimes magic. You need a little bit of magic sprinkled in there. And picked up Solaire, who ended up turning it on and being – I think he hit 320 for us down the stretch. And he had oh, Eddie yeah. Rosario, MVP, and then I'll be uh, DS. And, like, you know, just like – but once they made those trades, 
nothing against those guys, but it wasn't like a trade to win the World Series. It was a trade to compete for your division. And and I think that's kind of I was like, well, you know, we went out and got people, which is cool. We're not giving up, which I had a lot of respect for A, but it wasn't like we sold out to get, you know, we didn't give up prospects to get you one. We didn't, you know, like we didn't give up like half of our team or half our organization. It was just kind of like, oh, let's kind of patch some holes here and see how it ends up. But then as we went to playoffs, like we, the teams are facing like, oh, we're better than those guys. Man, we're better than those guys too. And we're better than those guys. You know, it was kind of like, I don't know. I don't think we, I didn't see our potential, but like, as we kept playing, I was just like, we're, we got a better lineup than them. We got a better bullpen than them. Like, you know, it was always kind of if something clicked, it clicked. If it didn't, it didn't. And I think that's how the playoffs go. What is, what's Alex Anthopoulos like? Because obviously here in Toronto, he's looked upon as like the second coming of Jesus Christ when he picked up David Price, when he did all those acquisitions. I mean, like I said, I would legitimately risk my life for Alex Anthopoulos, just the happiness he brought me in 2015, 2016. He's just one of the most mysterious men I've ever seen in my life. What is double A like, man? His voice, by the way, is absolutely incredible. It's just, I love the dudes. I mean, what, what's it like playing for him and just like, uh, just being a part of the organization with him? Yeah, I've had a couple of GMs, uh, you know, and assistant GMs I worked with and A is just the most, honestly, he's the most honest to me at least. And, uh, that's all you can ask for as a player. And, um, you know, you can, the best thing about it is you can have a, a just a normal conversation. We'll see him in the cafeteria every once in a while and just just ask you how your day is going and treat you like a human being, which is kind of rare in baseball. But uh, yeah. yeah, man, he's smart. He knows he knows his he knows his stuff about baseball, and he uh, yeah, he made he made the right choices, man. Again, he went out and got guys that were having okay first halves, and then found the diamonds in the rough that turned into having amazing second halves that that drove us into the playoffs and deep into the playoffs to w- actually win the World Series. No, it's just, yeah, you're, I mean, you're right on that. And Luke, I wanted to bring something up here because I am vouching for, and listen, these analytic nerds can take this shit. I'm vouching for the assist in the game of baseball. So the assist in the game of baseball is hypothetically speaking. If a relief pitcher is like struggling and there's a runner on first and third and his boy comes in and just goes punchy, punchy, punchy to end an inning. I'm not, I'm not going to name any scenarios here. We should call it an assist. I mean, let's look into that. I mean, if that's the case, I mean, I think don't... there. I, I don't think there should be an assist. I think there should be a rating scale of like a percentage, one to a hundred, and the most pivotal point of the baseball game should have, like, it could be for the hitter. If the hitter comes in second and third, two outs. That's going to be, you know, in the eighth inning, down a run. That's going to be the most pivotal point in the game for the pitcher and the hitter. You know what I mean, like. And it should have like execution in the highest of leverage situations because I mean, you have, you know, what Tyler Massick did all through the playoffs. You have what uh, Andrew Miller did for the Cleveland Indians for two years. Like these guys from the fifth inning to the eighth inning were carrying through the, like people don't factor in the heart of the order. Like you're facing two, three, four, like those are tough outs. And You know, like, let's say I'm the seventh inning guy and I come in or the eighth inning guy and I have to face eight, nine off the bench. And then Matzik comes in after me and he's got, you know, Mookie Betts, Chris Taylor and whatever. You're like, oh, Luke went three up, three down in the eighth and Tyler Matzik gave up a hit in the seventh. But he gave up a hit through the two, three, four. Like, he gave it through the T. Like, that's a lot more, in my personal opinion, that should have higher leverage, like higher percentage. And, uh you know, how you get paid in the off season, how arbitration works. I think like, yeah, saves are cool and holds are cool, but the biggest part of the games with the biggest things on the line, that should be factored in a lot more. Well, I'm actually, I think I'm, I think I don't, know. I, think, has it. I, don't know if, I don't know if I discussed this with Matzik, but I'm actually pretty sure I'm going to be a part of his arbitration uh, meeting. I will be there. <laughs> and it's I will be there in, in I, I don't know if his agent's cool oh. with it. I will be there. I will be flying to wherever it is. I'll be giving Alex Anthopoulos. All the the off, I will be giving Alex Anthopoulos all the off field shit. Why he brings eyes to the sport of baseball through Twitter, the analytics that Alex Anthopoulos probably has no idea about. But no, Luke, the reason why I mentioned it was because I know Matt gets a lot of credit for those those three strikeouts he got in that Dodgers game. But people don't talk about you. You gave him the greatest assist of all time. 
And that's not talked about enough. I, and when people mention that, they should be talking about Luke. If it were like Luke Jackson did that on purpose so Tyler Matzik can have a statue in Atlanta. If it wasn't exactly for- like if I'm not Steve Nash, <laughs> oh how God. is he supposed to get what he's doing? Yeah, exactly. Oh, you, you, you lobbed him one of the greatest assists. Matzik comes in against Albert Pujols, who never heard of him. Yeah, he got a TV. bunch of slap dicks. Yeah, just a honest. bunch of slap dicks, and Matzik goes 3 3 <laughs> down. But seriously, though, man, when you're in the dugout and they kept, I don't know why they kept panning to you. I, I, I was having nerves for They kept, like, looking at you. I'm like, get the camera off Luke Jackson. I was about to blow the game. Yeah, no, I know, but they kept, <laughs> look, I know, they kept looking at you, no, though. Eyes on that guy. Come on. But let's get, let's get your back. <laughs> like, what, what was your thought process? When Matzik st- steps on the mound, are you like saying a little prayer? Are you like, what's relaxing you when Matzik's on the mound there? Because you look like you were about to either one murder someone or two, like a deer in the headlights in, in the dugout. So what was like running through your head at that point? Uh, you know, you, you're always hoping for the best. You're like, okay, like, listen, best case scenario, he gives up one here and we're in this ball game. We got a chance to win. You know, that's kind of what you're thinking in your head. And I'm like, give it to the best man behind me, you know, that can come in. And that was Matzik. And I was like, listen, I'm not getting it done. LA has got my number. Come on, baby. Like, you know, throw your best bullet at him. And Matzik brought his best stuff to their best, some of their best hitters. And you know, the rest is history. Matzik, the rest is actually the history book. It is. Matzik, did he buy you a steak dinner for that shit? Because in hockey. No, I got him a water gun. You got him a water gun. Okay. He did. He yeah. bought me a water gun. He got me like a really high end water gun. This thing, <laughs> this thing shoots laser water beams, dude. It's insane. That's but the, the most thing I, the thing I, Yeah, it's a really random thing. But he's like, dude, I got something for you. I'm like, okay, what? And he pulls out this bazooka water gun that's like three feet long, battery operated. Like, yeah, it's insane. Better. It, was it's that a gift sweet. for your was that a gift for your child? And you just lobbed it over like a re-gift to Matzik? Like, what, what was the deal with that? Uh, no, but, uh, I, I really wanted one myself and it came in twos. That's kind of the real reason I got it. You, know? <laughs> so I'm I, got this, I got the extra. You got the extra. Bubbles. That's fine. And Luke, I'm I mean, hey, going back, going back to like when Luke was like freaking out in the dugout, if you walk me like walking in, like I, I walk in, I kind of brush him off. Like he's so happy. Like, dude, you didn't get all those runs. Unbelievable. <laughs> but I'm all focused on like, okay, look. He probably am I probably gonna have to go back out for the eighth and I'm still like trying to focus in and you can see hit Luke like so happy and I just like brushed him off and I feel bad for brushing him off because I didn't hey, want to do that. I was just focused you in on the, the playoffs, next inning. You and the playoffs were a different animal. At one point, remember you're yelling at the umpire so loud I was embarrassed to sit next to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Bro, Dude, it, we, we wanted it. You took another you He took was a- yelling, you don't want it so loud. At one point it was to the pitcher. To the umpire, <laughs> to guys on our own team. At one point, he was telling them they don't want it that bad. Who wants and it? Then, who wants it? Yeah, who wanted it? That's what he kept saying. And it was so loud that like I didn't want to be associated, and so I moved down on the bench. That but, is. Hey, I'll tell you right now. At that time, now I see why Matzik really wanted it. You well, he did want it clearly. I mean, the guy put his balls on the table, and and I'll say this: I was having fun with the Tyler Matzik ball jokes and stuff like that. But, I mean, people got to be a little bit more original now. I mean, it's just – it's starting to get a little old. Am I right, Matzik? I mean, every single mention that you're in, someone's mentioning your nutsack. Do you have the most – do you have the most famous nutsack in America? I didn't even think about that. Do you? I don't know. That's a tough one. I think you do. I'm sure somebody in the adult industry has got (laughs) their name for it. But, like, maybe non-adult industry I might be. I don't know. I mean, I want – again, I want to thank – I want to thank – That would be a top five trending nutsack probably. For sure. I I think think you're up there. It's like you, Johnny Sins, Ron Jeremy. I don't know if they're known for their nutsacks actually, but I know know for a fact you're up there for sure. You have to be. And Luke, I mean, so when Matzik was obviously he was the most clutch man in the playoffs out of the out of the bullpen, all that kind of stuff. Everyone's pumping his tires and the fans, but being a teammate of his during that run that he had in the playoffs, are you guys yes. kind of looking at each other like, what the fuck is this guy do? Like, this guy's a fucking psychopath. Like, what's it like no, being a teammate no. when someone's he's dialed had, in? He's had he's had that he he's always had that kind of not serial killer mentality, but he's always got. I mean, I think that's what set him apart. I mean, you know his career path and his story, and I think he had to have this killer instinct, and that's kind of his uh, his go to now to get him to where he needs to be. I mean, a lot of it is. The game is mental. I mean, when you have the stuff that he has, once he puts his mental there, you know, you watched it in the playoffs. And I think a lot of 
baseball, there's so many talented people these days and so many guys who throw 100, but between the years is where it's a monster. I yeah. can't take you serious. You got bubbles now in your back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> did you just spray the can't. bubbles in? I, like, I weirdly <laughs> feel like Brian Wilson, and I'm not trying to have that vibe. It's just literally the only 35 minutes I have for free. And you guys were going to enjoy bath time with me. I respect – honestly, man, I'm, like, and listen – and I roasted Derek Dietrich a lot because he did – when I interviewed Derek Dietrich, he did the podcast. What do we got on Derek Dietrich? Uh, he did the podcast. What's with the oil? What's with the oil during the nighttime games? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. He did a podcast with me like when I, when I was grinding. I think this was before I had Matzik on. He was outside in his backyard. It looked like it was like a, a tornado happened. I couldn't hear what the fuck the guy was saying. He was in his backyard. <laughs> tanning during our fucking podcast but at least this you're in a, a soundproof room where i can actually hear what you're saying so i respect the hell out of it man it's one of the most ballsiest yeah now the now the bubbles now the now the the water's off now we got good crisp audio yeah now it's like great crisp audio but dude i gotta bring this up because obviously like you're like you're like the common man actually all three of us are like the common man we're not i mean some may say i'm in great shape well i'm gonna say it myself but we're all of us three are like the common man. We look like guys that'll get into bar fights. So both of you, I have to ask you this. Being the common man, what's a couple of funny chirps that a fan has said to you? I'll start with you, Luke, because being in the bullpen, it's oh, really easy dude. to chirp someone. What's the best chirp that you've got or like a fan just being so offside for no reason to you? I mean, they, I, my buddies from back home, they have a whole group text message whenever they see something funny on twitter they send it i'll have to get some highlights from there but there's this whole one that i was like a lunch lady and it was kind of fit <laughs> the motto for a bit there and honestly i'm not going to go against it because i saw the picture they used as my header and borderline <laughs> was spot on <laughs> it's it's incredible but matt but dude a clip that was actually got funny when we had matzik on before the world series was when matzik was like roasting the dodgers fans rightfully so some may say i fueled the fire because i fucking hate dodgers fans but do you have the same impression of dodgers fans as matzik has here like they're just offside for no reason they matzik get personal literally talks to the fans more than everyone on earth <laughs> it's almost like borderline to the point like, please just shut up they're gonna stay here <laughs> <laughs> it's true man i talk a lot of shit to all the fans i called one guy a little yerpy ch uh, yappy chihuahua and i, man, I rolled a ball and that. i told him to go get it i said go get it go get the ball boy go get the ball <laughs> he was not happy about that he shut up real quick though Dude. Uh, i told another fan in philly that you know he probably he's so fat he hasn't seen his pecker i, I talk shit to him and it's fun i mean he's calling me fat He was calling me fat and then i was calling him fat but i mean it was fat on fat fat on the, the, the group text message and I'm looking through these tweets is called Dodgers is my daddy. So there should be something in here. <laughs> Dodgers is my daddy. Yeah, Luke, really Luke, Luke, Luke struggles against the Dodgers. It's just a statistical thing. Mo most people do, though. I mean, a lot of people's careers are ended against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Like, let's not forget that. But, I mean, Matzik has just became a legend against them. But, dude... It, I, do you guys play in Toronto this year? I got to search this up because the Toronto uh, fans... We have to unless Toronto's closed. They're like a kind of a rivalry, I guess. If the Toronto fans are like, <laughs> you guys thought you got a bat. I mean, you get these Canadian hockey fans that just get after it. It's going to be a nightmare. I mean, I better not sit near the bullpen because I will just be going fisticuffs. Fight club if anyone comes out, the <laughs> friends of the pod. But Toronto is a nightmare. Is So you, you, you would say LA is like the, the hardest place to play? Like both of you would say that? No, I think if you're talking worst fans, hands down, Philly. Philly, yeah. Philly's I got bad. Philly. I got Philly. They're up right there. on top of you. Yeah, they're right on top of you. They're annoying as heck. The the guys like, dude, I, I, they just it feels trashy. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm getting trash. Like. <laughs> Trash coming from trash is just like I feel grimy leaving that place every it's time. It's trash on trash crime. It's trash Ex on trash exactly crime. That's what exactly it feels like. What it is. That's incredible, dude. No, but uh, no, yeah, the Philly fans are ruthless for sure. But going into the year, I mean, I wanted to talk about that Jorge Solar, Soler, Solar, whatever the fuck, how do you even know how to say it? That home run that just, it seems like when John Boy wants to go viral again on Twitter, and listen, I, this might be a trip to John Boy. Actually, it is. When they want to go viral on Twitter, they just post a clip of uh, Soler's home run. But what was it like being a part of that, like seeing that in live, real action? Did you guys realize I, how fucking far that home run went? 
I actually watched it from the dugout. Um, I was sitting there and watching foul off all those pitches, and then he hit it, and I didn't think it was out. Like, I didn't know how it works, really, because I don't see many homers from the dugout. <laughs> and he hit it, and then I realized it was, like, halfway up the flagpole still going up. And I was like, dang, like, that's got to be a homer, even though it was, like, already 180 feet out of the stadium. <laughs> I don't know. It's just surreal because it's in the World Series, and you don't think you're ever going to have the lead, really. You're like, ah, hopefully he hits a homer here, but that's just hoping. And next thing you know, free run Jimmy, like over the moon. That was Matu. I mean, you were in. The, I'm assuming you were in the. You were in the, <sighs> the bullpen, right? So I mean, what was yeah. the, What was it? Because obviously, I'm. I'm assuming the the bullpen's in left field, right? So you couldn't see how far that thing actually went. So what? What was the boys in the bullpen like? I mean, when that ball was absolutely like, I mean, just the sound of the. If you rewatch it, the sound of the ball off the bat there was like idiotic. It's like it, yeah. it's, still, it's one of the most historic home runs I think. Yeah, we we all knew it was a homer, but we didn't realize how far it truly went because that bullpen down there is terrible. You're like in a cave. There's no TV. You can't see the game, and you're trying to watch it from 500 feet away with zero elevation. So, you know, we knew that it was a bomb, but we didn't realize it went out of the stadium by a long shot. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of jealous. I'm jealous that Luke got to watch it from the from the dugout because you know he's got service time and all this. And he's you know a big name guy, so he's able to come down and like the. It was the inning second inning guy, or the <laughs> it was the first. It was like the third inning. It was the second. He was leading off. He was leading off. Yeah. So he had to have been the second at bat, I think. That was yeah. That was just bananas to me. And I actually I wanted to bring this up to you guys because I have a proposition, and maybe you guys as pitchers can either shut this down or be like, actually, I would be honored if someone did that against me. I have a pimp job idea for hitters. So let's say hypothetically a hitter launches a baseball into Neptune, like we're talking like four fifty, five hundred. He has a prop. The bat boy has a neck brace on deck just in case. And the batter or the bat boy walks the neck brace out to the pitcher and hands in the neck brace after giving up a 500 foot moonshot. Let's say hypothetically speaking, what would be like your react? Like, would you be honored a guy did that against you, or would you like it? Would it be immediate fight? Like, what what would you guys be doing? Man, I'd probably grab it, throw it at him, and say, "Put it on," because <laughs> I'm a I'm a body bag you on the next AB. Yeah, exactly. there's no way. Yeah, there's that one. That one's not getting by. I don't I mind think, a respectable, like if you, the, as long as you spend the least amount of time, you could ride the bat around home plate. But if you have like a decent tempo, you rocket launcher, you samurai sword it in. But if you have a decent tempo, all good with me. You stop and run to your dugout and like get a drink of water, high five every player, and then go to first base. Like, no, nah, the next guy's giving it. Well, and, and He's being, playing, guy. yeah. Well, well, the thing is, right? It's like, as a pitcher, are you more comfortable with giving up like a, a, a new compared to like a wall scraper? I always wonder this. Like, listen, the stat nerds could just suck this one too, because this is what I'm wondering. Just the thought process. Would you rather give up a 500 foot moonshot or it? Like compared to like a wall scraper where it's like, listen, my, my guy maybe could have caught that. Like, what do you prefer being like a, a relief? If, if I was on a multi-year deal, hit that baby 700 feet. But because, <laughs> but because it's exit velocity and that will like bring your exit velocity average up, even though it's the same amount of points given up, got to keep that EV a little lower. So no, nah, I don't want that. Okay. Barely get out. 88 off the bat. Well, I mean, so Matt's, I mean, a guy like Matzik, for instance, you just earned yourself like a lifetime contract here. So what, what, what are you rather giving up here? Cause you, you, I mean, the 500 foot home run is like, you, you get to be on sports center. You kind of get to shine even being <laughs> on the TV. Way. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, yeah. So which, like, which one do you like, do you hate the wall scraper more than the 500 foot home run? Like which one is, was you hate more? I mean, I get what Luke's saying with the statistics and all that stuff. I mean, my exit velocity is high anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So I'd probably give up the giant bomb just because then I don't feel like I got cheated with a crappy home run that gave up three runs. Like, at least the guy earned it. Like, he timed me up and he, he, he got the better of me, you know. So, you know, if I give up, like, a weak pop fly home run that's a wall scraper, I'm just sitting there going, like, seriously, guy, like, I broke your bat and you got one out. Like, that's, that's just – that sucks. What's one moment – what's, and- what's the best homer you gave up? Yeah, I was about to ask that. Like, what's the, the best biggest home bomb? Run? You know, yeah, you never really give up. Man. I gave up one to Contreras. It was a freaking bomb ski, bro. Four seventy to center, left center. It was an absolute missile. 
Yeah, but it was like a seven to one ball game, so I really didn't care. Like I was just trying to throw fastballs right down the middle. It was the ninth inning. It was a tank. So we'll and he just took a while to get around the bases, and I was like, "Okay, guy, like you're still losing. Like it was like four to one or so he's know, a stop seven potter. to one. He's a stop potter. He just potting the I mean, stops absolutely. when the game when 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 Matzik's throwing in little beach balls there for fun because he's trying to get the game over with. He's a stop potter. Yeah, Will Sigatura is a stop potter. Yeah, I was getting some. I was getting some uh, just some work in, you know, throwing heaters. We all knew the whole the whole team knew. Everybody knew. And, and, I, and up. yeah, and I'm fascinated with obviously the post World Series celebrations were an off field podcast. We had Joe Musgrove humble brag no hitter after he came on the podcast. He told a story of a fan throwing a beer at him from the top of a parking tower, and he caught it and then chugged it. One of the most electric videos I think I've ever seen in my life. So on a scale of one to ten, I'll ask both of you this. How blackout drunk were you for that parade? And was it more than after the World Series? Like, wh- wh- where would you rank both? Uh, uh, I, after the parade, um, my whole family traveled with my wife. It was the first time with our four-week-old at the time. He actually flew to Houston and came to the last game. And my wife got a little too banged up, so I was playing a uh, lifeguard that night so i didn't get to do do my damage and then on the tour bus it was cold we were taking shots it was like a long day i didn't get i didn't get where i needed to be but it was an it was fun it was a lot of fun was you, need, you needed to be yeah i got a little after he, he needed to be a little bit more because he told the fans in his talk that they were very prompt this year what was it very yeah, hard. Yeah, um, a little punctual you need it you you punctual you needed to probably you know get a little bit more liquid courage because that would have went what you were south. saying to them yeah that would have went i oof i wouldn't i wouldn't be on the braves anymore probably well well actually i you Matzik made history at the parade because he quote unquote we're gonna say got arrested here and you actually cleared your name on our account of what actually happened but what, I mean, what's going on there? So you go off the bus to, I'm assuming, greet a fan. Is that right, Matzik? And then next thing you know, you're just, the the, the, the cops are on your ass. Like no, it's GTA 5. No, let me this story. This is what happens. He tells everyone in the back of the bus that he's feeling it and he wants to high five the fans because they deserve it. <laughs> all right. So then all of a sudden we don't see him. He's out. He does like a left in front of the bus, high fives the people, wraps around. He comes running between like two buses, so the cop doesn't know who he is. Just thinking the guy like running gets arrested. His wife is pulling on my jersey. I'm like, uh, what's up? What's up? She's pointing at Matzik. I'm like, yeah, and she's like, that's Tyler. And I'm like, oh boy. She's like, are you gonna do something? I said, that's ah, too late. He's gone. He just left me. And next thing you know, he appeared on the bus. I don't know what happened. I was hoping he was arrested, and I was gonna have to bail him out after. I thought it'd been even cooler story. But unfortunately, he got out of handcuffs. The funniest yeah, part of that wife, story is he's gone. He's gone. He's done. <laughs> Everybody wants says they want to do cool shit until it comes time to do cool shit. That's all I'm gonna say. So I went and did cool shit. That oh man, that was now you you were like trending. You were like trending on Twitter at one point. And actually, the reason why I found out was. Tyler's brother Kyle messaged me and said, I just think Kyle got ar- or Tyler got arrested. So I Google Tyler Matzik arrest. And in, I, I think I'll credit us. I would think I was the first one to post the video, but it's just the one of them. And that cop got dragged. Like, and what really pissed me off is it's a funny video. I posted it because it was just funny. And everyone under the comment section just started getting political with me. Like, I had no <laughs> idea what was going on. I was getting roasted. No, like, dude, the-, the cop the cop was doing his job, man. He did fine. Like, he, all he did was talk to me and say, what are you doing? Who are you? And I told him. I told him. And he's like, okay, well, get back on the bus. That's the only thing that happened. Yeah, like, no. It, they- he was totally fine. Yeah, no, the, like the people had to just chill, but that that's what you that's what you do here. And you both are Luke, have you always been like this vocal on social media, like on Twitter and all that kind of stuff? I know you're a Bitcoin guy or a crypto or whatever. Ah, uh, yeah. Kind of nerdy. I'm a are you wearing guy. a robe right now? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you're wearing like a mafia robe, bro. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Keep going. So what are we saying here, Luke? You've always been big on social media because your interaction, I mean, every tweet you make, you get, like, I think you get, like, the the uh, N- NFT guys always responding to your shit. But what's going on yeah, with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a super nerd. So I do, like, nerdy things. Like, 
I, I, I have like a nerd following. I've been part of the gamer community. I did like the whole esports thing. I mean, listen, Twitter, Instagram, that's, uh, I wish I was more on it because there's some, you know, it's awesome to connect with the fans and stuff. I think Tyler does a great job with that. I use it more of like a, like a Google search, like learning things or looking for help on something. I, you know, I, I wish I used it more, but I have a kid now and you can't do anything. Yeah. I mean, the dad's try and that kid, your kid is just, you, you know, he's going to have just, uh, that child's going to have just an incredible first year of life. Worlds attended a world series game. Yeah, he, uh, he's actually undefeated. He's undefeated. He's undefeated. He's undefeated. I mean, that kid has to come with me to a sports book when I'm, when I'm oh, gambling, yeah. cause I, I might never lose a game. I, <laughs> no, I might go nine and oh. <laughs> I need to sit next to me at the blackjack table tomorrow night. Should be a hell of a ride. There you go. <laughs> you might never lose, bro. You might never. I, I, another guy, another guy that I wanted to bring up here is 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 front of another front of the show, Tucker Davidson. And you both are obviously close to them, and obviously he's a young guy. What do you guys see out of Tuck? I'll go first with you, Luke, because I I believe you you you're like kind of like his mentor, like a father figure to the guy. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> he always tweets at you, but what do you see from young Tuck? Uh, he's, he's got electric stuff. I know he dealt with some injuries this year and he had to battle through that. He had a heck of a job coming back and working his tail off to get back to where he is. And once I think we get to see his full potential and what he really can bring to the table, I think he's going to be a huge asset to the Braves. And Matzik, I mean, he, be, he's also a TikTok star. Yeah, he's a TikToker. He's actually turned into like a young Bryce Hall. He's, I call him the Bryce Hall of yeah, baseball. Yeah, yeah, he's the Bryce yeah. Hall of baseball. You guys gotta start uh, ragging on him in the club. I mean, the guy is oh, a vlogger. He's a we do. You guys roast his TikToks, eh? That's incredible. Oh, we do. <laughs> he's a TikToker. I mean, the guy. He's gonna start be start doing that Corvette dance and the, like Juju Smith and the dug <laughs> in the dugout certain later on the logo. I mean, the guy loves yep. TikTok. It's incredible. It, so I'm assuming that's something you're just never going to get into. I mean, you both can we actually mark you both off as never going to be on TikTok ever? Like just, just at one point I was trying to do the Rick and Morty. I don't know, man. Do you remember that? <laughs> I do remember that. You had me playing in the clubhouse every day. I was, I was trying to do the Rick and Morty in St. Louis. But all right, that's all right. the extent of my TikTok. So I'm going to end this recording right here. I'll send you the new link. It, I'll just, it'll just be like the last five minutes of the podcast. So I'll just, I'll send it to you. Let me just end it. Cause it's going to, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. It's going to cut out. So I'll All send right. you the next one. Send the, uh, send the, the meeting number and yeah. password. All right, cool. I will. All right. You have the most country music name of all time. And you have that country music look. I mean, have you thought about like throwing on the cowboy hat, like a young AJ Minter, maybe tapping into the country music market? Uh, I mean, AJ Minter is already a country rapper. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't want to steal his limelight. He hasn't released his song yet, but it's out there. Soon I'll this get is my true. on it. He this has a song. Is, wait, is this breaking? AJ Minter has an actual song. He does. Yeah, breaking he won't play for anybody. He won't play. Like, is is he good? Like, I heard. Like, it be honest. Time. Like, is a trust circle? Like, is he actually it's like? It's not bad. It's not bad. It really is not bad. Like, it's it's better than you think. But it's a legit country song rap country song that he did his brother has studio time it was like legitly done wow and he won't play it for anybody that's insane so he's just keeping it under under wraps i respect the hell out of that but luke i mean your nickname which is something i don't know it, it's some may say i'm not a fan of it slider man i mean is that is that self-proclaimed is that your self-proclaimed nickname or how was that given to you was did matza give it to you no, no, no. Uh, it was from 2019. I threw like 80% sliders. And I'm also like super nerdy. So they kind of just like were like cartoons. Spider-Man, Slider-Man. I don't know. It's kind of how it came about. That's one of the most random nicknames of all. And honestly, like, I think you got to make that your your new profile picture. Maybe like a Photoshop of you on top of Spider-Man. I, I actually, it, it was forever. I have one. Oh, well, okay. Put, I'll put it on a shirt. I'm going to put it on a shirt whenever you guys come to Toronto. We'll just, I'll get a whole section wearing Slider-Man shirts at the Rogers Center. It'll just be like a little Luke Jackson. I actually have a, I'm trying to find this picture. I have a funny picture of Matzik that I was going to send out for Christmas to his family. I'm sure I can't find it. It's one of the most funny pictures of all time. He just looks like he's out to lunch. I, I, I'm going to find it. Don't worry. Sooner or later, I'm going to find it. We're going to get the whole change room wearing it. It's, it, it's going to be incredible, but Matzik, I wanted to bring this up to you because Luke, 
Luke is a golf guy. Actually, when you search him on YouTube, there's videos of him golfing with Canada's hero, Canada's songbird, Mike Soroka. How many strokes are you giving Luke on the golf course? Because I know you're a golf guy too. You and my guy, Jay Fuentes, golf. So how many strokes are you giving to Luke over here aside? Probably 10 to 15. Really? It, it, I've, I've seen his athletic ability, man. It's not, it's not very good. Have you seen his mechanics? I would, guy, I would wax Tyler Matzik up and down the golf course. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true at all. He has Luke has zero athletic ability, so <laughs> there's no way he's beating me in any any sport, anything, anything. I think we got to do that like a content piece, like the officially unofficial open. I'll just we'll just have like six or six or seven foursomes and just winner take all, like no second place prize, just straight first place, and we'll just do a scramble. It'll be me and Tyler's brother, who's obviously a scratch golfer, who's a freak of nature on the golf course. And you guys can just fiend for yourself with your partners. Who's like, who's a good golfer on the Braves? Like who's a couple of good guys in the Braves that are like, this guy, this guy is like a, this guy's giving me like five aside. Probably. I should say weirdly enough to say, and I hate saying it, but AJ is probably the best golfer we have. Yeah. AJ's AJ is like probably a, yeah. Like a five handicap, I think is what he's mm-hmm. at, which is pretty good. Damn. Yeah. Dude, yeah. That's... AJ's pretty good. Do you guys ever look, and obviously, like I mentioned, like you're the common man. Like, do you do you guys ever look at like Dansby Swanson and just be like, man, fuck you, man. Like he's good looking and he's nasty at the game of baseball. Like, do you look at Dansby and you're like, like, what the fuck? Like, pick one. I said this, I said this on the episode actually that we did with Cade Cavalli, who throws 101. I said, dude, you have it both. Like, you have to pick one. Do you guys look at Dansby and you're like, man, I just despise this guy because he's literally good at every single thing? I mean, it's him and Duvall, honestly. Like, they're the two hottest Duvall's guys in the league. Duvall's number one by shot. Dansby's hot. Duvall's way hotter. <laughs> <laughs> two, two hottest guys in the league, man. And we're just like, dude, it's not fair. Like, yeah. It's just, I, I mean, yeah. It's just not fair, man. It, yeah, you dude, said it, 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 it's it. crazy because every time Dansby swans in on the TV, it's just – it's Campbell's panty soup in Atlanta. I mean, this guy <laughs> is is just an absolute man rocket. It's crazy yeah. to me. These guys – and you, you could obviously even make the case for, like, Austin Riley too. But it's just these – I look at these good-looking baseball players that are just freaks and, like, superstars, and I'm like, dude, I hate you. Like, I legitimately hate you, just every single aspect of that. So Luke, are, are you so are you like this? And we're gonna pump our tires here. Would you say you're like the smartest guy on the Braves, like, like intelligence wise? I mean, the smartest guy wouldn't say he's the smartest guy, but uh, Tyler Matzik will tell you I'm the smartest guy. Well, I mean, Matzik didn't go. I mean, Matzik didn't go to school at a. He was a first rounder. He just bypassed university. So I mean, Matzik, Matzik's on like the same IQ level as me. I would say. I would say me and Matzik Luke, are like similar. Luke. Uh... Luke says he's more educated than me because he went to one semester at like some junior college or something. UCF, UCF, prestigious University of Central Florida. <laughs> you spent like a quarter of a semester there and dropped out. <laughs> one semester. One you should, full why is semester. in your bio college dropout? I mean, that you're missing a massive opportunity there. What are you doing? Call it. You know, yeah. College I mean, dropout. That's, that's that's so that's so. A couple years ago, all the baseball players did that. College oh, really? Dropout. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, way behind, way behind. That. I, I am way behind, and and I mean, and one and another gripe I have against you. I'm not an NFT guy. Like I actually have the word NFT muted on my Twitter because I'm so goddamn annoyed by it. And Master, are you in the same boat as me here? Are you going to become an NFT guy? And I'm, am I going to have to have you like potentially muted one day on Twitter? Look, I'm all I'm all for like NFTs or whatever if you can make money doing it. But you, these NFT guys like Luke. <laughs> he says he says he's an NFT guy, but yet to this day, I ask him. I've asked him fifteen freaking times. He cannot explain to me what a damn NFT is. Yes, he just said, "Oh, there's there's code. There's code in the background. Are you ready? Are you ready? Looks cool. Sometimes they hatch. Like it's the code, man. It's the code. I'm like, hey, code. when is this? What code? When, when is this getting released? By the way, this, this is getting released next week, next Thursday, January twenty seventh. Okay, we should be launched by then. Well currently building my own nft right now you guys can be part of the naming process it is a it's i don't know if you guys know what a dao is dao it's decentralized anonymous organization no (laughs) no 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 yeah i know what you're talking about the dao that's the d-a-o-w different completely (laughs) different this is uh like a 
business based in a blockchain type thing. Yeah, whatever. We'll talk about that later. But so if you own my NFT, you'll be part of our wine club <laughs> and you'll receive you'll receive a bottle of wine that I've curated and like made and it will become its own NFT. Like the bottle of wine itself, like if you open it up, there'll be a barcode, you scan it, it will put a picture in your phone. So it's a one of one. And there'll only be 1200 of these bottles ever made. And each month you'll get one. And that is attached to the NFT if you buy our membership. Here are the names that we're trying to decide. Let's brainstorm the names. Yeah, let's brainstorm the names. Yeah. I need help choosing. That's This is perfect. I need other eyes and ears on me. Hey, count, so, count me yeah. in. I'll get one of these. I'll go with one of these memberships. So count me in on one of these things. Oh, yeah. I'll see if I can get you a whitelist. Um, Burgundy Boys is our original wine club that we had in the postseason. And it's like, all right. You have the Lost Bottle Society. That's a good one. Cool Kids Juice Club. Because, nope. like, the whole, NFT, the whole NFT world, though, is, like, very uh, hype beastie, cool kids. Like, it, but it's, like like one of the biggest NFTs in the world is called cool cats, like just cool cats. It's just, I don't know. It's kind of a play on like the hype beast school kids juice club, the garden club, midnight harvest, the hidden harvest, fine vine society, liquid art society, (laughs) mastermind wine co. Hold on. There's a couple more. This is all my brain. This is me and my buddy from brainstorming two days now what else is in here yeah a lot of the other stuff is like i think it's the second one what was the second one you said that i was like i'm all in on the the lost bottles lost bottles i mean that has to be it i mean i think it has to be lost bottles because it just hits that was our original name that was like our original name but then we thought we needed to go more not corporate type naming because like the whole idea behind it we want it to be like a hidden society like an underground so like Secret fight club. Wine club. So it's like the fight club exactly. of NFTs. Yes, there's so one that, rule about fight club. Yeah, you don't talk about. It. So and can you make an NFT? So Matzik knows about this. He's a friend of the show. I pissed myself last year. Uh, for yes. I, I pissed myself on Instagram Live when the Jays got George Springer. Um, can you make an NFT of the picture of me pissing myself, and we'll just make it a one of one? You can make it. I'm not gonna. No, no, no. I'm not making. I'm not. I'm not technical. You five seconds. So what do you mean? So I. So I would just make it. YouTube, how to make a picture NFT, and it'll give you a four minute video on YouTube, and it will download one app, and it'll be an NFT. All right, so we're gonna do a one of one NFT of me pissing myself. <laughs> the winner of it, I whoever gets the NFT, the highest bid gets to golf with me and Kyle Matzik, and Tyler Matzik maybe will show up. So it's gonna be that the winner gets that, and I, I'm not flying you out, not paying for any of your expenses. You have to figure out your own <laughs> way to get to California. That's the one of one. That's the only way you get it is you get a golf you get maybe a golf round and yeah so there's something <laughs> attached to an nft it makes you got a lot of value right there and actually so. believe it or not I'm, I'm trying to pump the tires here I, i'm a i'm a meta athlete nft type of guy like that my guy started that company the baseball the meta athletes nft i don't know yeah. if you've seen mm-hmm. that program yeah no no i know what it is. kevin smith started it so i'm actually we're gonna see if we're gonna get my piss nft on it maybe maybe you can actually i actually still have the pants that i pissed in can i make those an NFT, maybe we'll get that. Maybe we'll figure that out. We'll have a hundred percent. There's like this big thing nowadays, like it's called like curated vaults. Like I can buy like a holographic Charizard or a Honus Wagner baseball card. And I own that card, but it's like in a museum or in a shop. And if I ever want it sent to me, they'll send me my card that I own, but then it burns the NFT. It burns the picture. You don't get the picture. You don't get the NFT anymore. That's bananas. All right. So I'm kind of wild. Yeah. That's our NFT hour. And this is the last thing that I wanted to bring up here. And obviously you guys are kind of going into the ring ceremony and you guys are going to get the rings, the banner, the crowd's going to be just absolutely blackout for that game. It's going to be bananas. You guys broke the Atlanta sports Chris, by the way. So thank you for your service. Both of you. I'm not a land sports fan. Actually. I, I, I bet. I bet on Alabama in the Nash championship. So you guys actually kind of fucked me over on that. Cause you guys broke the Atlanta <laughs> sports Chris, but Going into the ring ceremony, and obviously you both aren't flashy dudes. Matzik likes to wear suits, and I respect the hell out of it. Maybe I'm going to send Matzik a suit, by the way. My mom works at a suit store. But what's going to be going on here? Where 
what's where are you guys going to be wearing these rings? Are you guys going to be pulling them out every once in a while? Maybe some fancy stops, or is it going to be just something that's never worn ever? Like outside of the day, you have to put it on. I'll probably end up. I don't think I'll ever wear mine. Yeah, I'll probably end up only. I'll only wear it at like events that are like World Series event or something. Yeah, I'm kind of like. That's about it. You both actually sit in a safe. You both, no, 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 you're not going to do that. So this is what's going to happen. So whenever I get married, like five years, six years, you have to wear the World Series ring to my wedding. Like both of you are invited, <laughs> by the way. Luke, you're invited to my wedding. Um, if, 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 your child will probably be I'll like be five there. or six. Your child, actually, we're going to just, we're going to knock all the birds down here. Can your child be the ring bearer at my future wedding? We like in five, six years? That, yes, we could do that. We your can make child that will happen. be the ring bearer at my, in my, at my wedding in five or six years. Um, Matzik will be on the, Matzik actually maybe get your, uh, become a minister, Matzik. We'll have you just ordain the wedding. Can you imagine? All right. I, you I'm start, I actually have my he license. Like I have my light. I have my license to do that. Actually, believe it or not, I actually got it online. I got the license yeah. Or, or, yeah, ordain, a, ordain a wedding. So we'll just do that. But are you, so the ring, have you, have they even came out with like what the ring looks like yet? Or have they no, like Matzik, talked to you How guys? fat was your finger? How fat was your finger? My finger's not what fat. It was work? a 10. I guarantee you, your yeah, fat sausage my, fingers are no, bigger than mine. No, that's what mine was too. I thought yours, yours was going to be a 15. I thought yours was going to be a 15. Yeah. Big, and strong like, sausage fingers. And, and listen, yeah, this is actually the last thing. So going into next year, obviously, the New York Mets decided to just form a super team. What is your guys' thought process going into next year? I mean, wh- wh- what are you thinking? You guys are going to be fully healthy. Acuna is going to be back. We're hoping Freddie's back unless he signs with the Blue Jays. I've actually started that rumor in the rumor mill, Freddie Freeman of the Blue Jays, because his mom's from Canada. But, I mean, going into next year, I mean, looking at the team that you guys have as of right now, I mean, what's your thought process? I mean, what's the goals for you guys that you guys have? And, like, what are you guys going into next year? Like, obviously, it's repeat or bust. But, I mean, what what are you guys thinking? I mean, that team's going to be an absolute wagon. You got Acuna back and Soroka. Yeah, yeah, I know. We got a lot of young talent coming back. Hopefully everybody stays healthy and the process goes, you know, well for them in their recovery. I think it is. Uh, you know, I think, honestly, I said it last year, the Mets are going to Mets. You know, they just they find a way to do yep. something that – He did say that. Fan, they, that they, start, they start booing each other. They start doing all that stuff. You know, we've got great fans that are, you know, supporting us every single day. Um, and it uh, it shows, man. And we, we went ahead and took that division and – the rest is history. Have you guys thought about doing like a this is yeah? Have you guys thought about doing like a potential celebration after a strikeout, like a Fernando Rodney shooting of the arrow or shooting of the cross? Like because we're talking about marketing players here and all these weird NFT crypto bullshit that I have no idea about. Have you guys thought about like maybe mixing in like some sort of celebration, maybe like a a, a gun celebration or doing the gritty off the mound? Like Matt, obviously you jump, you have like a twenty six inch vertical. So what what's going on there? Have you thought about maybe implementing something in your uh, post strikeout at the end, end of an inning celebration? Honestly, that, it took a lot out of me to get it, to go ahead and do that. So like I don't know that I'm gonna be able to do that, you know, all the time. I just it was overcome with emotion, but. You know, I remember one game, Tuki was making fun of me because I remember one game it was in San Francisco and it was like bases loaded and we had Crawford up. The whole crowd was yelling MVP, MVP. And then uh, I think I got him a ground out or I got him a strike out or something. And as I was walking off, I did the Wolverine. He was yelling at me for doing the Wolverine because I was so pumped. And he's like, bro, you did the Wolverine. I can't believe that you're – and I'm just like, dude, I don't even remember doing it. Half the time I want to walk up and I do something like that, I don't remember it. I have to, like, be reminded. And he was looking at me like, bro, what the hell was that? You did the Wolverine. I'm like, oh, all right, sure. Luke, so, what, yeah, well, what about you, Luke? Have you Are you implementing something next year? Like, give the fans something. Give the fans what they want. Let's make baseball fun again. Maybe, like, you have a shirt that says, fuck Rob Manfred under your jersey. <laughs> you just pull it up, take the fine. We'll start a GoFundMe for you. We'll start the GoFundMe <laughs> right now. We'll start the GoFundMe right now to pay for your fine when you do that. Ah, dude, I'm I'm one of those. I just kind of go out there, do my thing. I rarely get fired up. I think the more like hyped and fired up I am, the 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 worse. I don't know. The worse it goes for me. So I try to stay I try to stay about as even keel as I can. And that I guess it just translates to after the inning. I respect that. No, no flashes Yo, from. Johnny, have you ever seen a guy who was supposed to be like so into tech and like so into gaming and all this and 
and he's a baseball player. He's obviously got some money. Have such shitty internet, guy. Your internet is so bad. I, no, he's, on, he's using on, a Wendy's on, Wi-Fi. Is there I'm a on, Wendy's I'm near your some, house? I'm, you're... On, I'm on cell service. I'm not on Wi-Fi. Well, then get on, get on Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's all good, guy, man. You're glitchy. Anyways, <laughs> Matt, and I'll, I'll end it right here. I mean, the one electric interview for the people, a two for one. A guy that I we actually, actually just gave his son a future job. He's going to be the ring bearer at my future wedding in five to six years when this podcast is just on the moon. Maybe you'll be an intern. <laughs> Maybe your son will intern for me sometime down the road. We'll, we'll figure something out. But anyways, boys, Matzik, obviously, it was always a pleasure. And Luke, it was a pleasure to meet you. Welcome to, like, this little cult we have here with the Efficient Official Podcast. It's like, it's – I'm all, actually what – we, what we do for the people that don't know, after the interview, Luke actually has to put a knife to his hand and cut it, and we'll, we just virtually shake hands with blood on our hand that he's joining the cult. So welcome, Luke. Actually, Tyler already did it. So Tyler won't be able to do it. But, Luke, just welcome to the cult, man. Yeah, I don't know. I'm one of the the fourth bolt I've joined, so you know, <laughs> I'm into seances and things, you know. Anyways, man, thank you guys for listening. Obviously, you know what it is the most the, the most electric baseball podcast on planet Earth. Luke, Jack, we're gonna say Luke, this was your first baseball podcast. Can we say that? We're just gonna say that, just even if it isn't. Yeah, that's perfectly fine to say. Luke, Luke's first <laughs> baseball podcast. So just it was a pleasure, man, and uh, let's ride and. I'm going to be a Braves Jays fan this year. I get roasted for being a fan of two teams. I'm going to get those hats with like the Braves logo and the Jays logo on both sides. Maybe the split jerseys. That's what like the mom, doing. like your yeah. mom, you have kids <laughs> on both teams. That's what I'm going to be doing. That's what I'm going to be doing. There it is.